It's time for Everything Noob, your source for all things gaming. It is time once again, Everything Noob Podcast. I am Vortech, joined this evening by Jemmy and Dreadlow. How's it going, you two? Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Man, oh man, there's like some game coming out tonight, I guess. I know, I don't really think it's a big deal. Nah. About it. Anyway, so, uh... No, it's Grand Theft Auto. I couldn't even think of anything to divert because there's no news about anything else. It is all no. Grand Theft Freaking Auto. It's only the only thing anyone ever wants to talk about right now. It's just like every forum, every news thread, everything is just a wall of Grand Theft Auto Five anticipation. Or I bought the game and I've been waiting for release, and my Xbox died. And my Xbox, or it, it won't pre-download, so I have to wait two hours after it actually does release, or something like that. I that's the one downside to console releases that are digital. Still, no, no pre-downloading is available a lot of the times. So, you know, all these people who wait, wait at Walmart, they're the the ones who aren't really getting suckered. That's what I would be doing if I was getting it on console, but I'm not. I'm waiting. I'm holding out for PC. Because I never turn those things on anymore, and you know what? I never buy a cons a new console game when I know the next generation is right on like the edge of releasing, because mm -hmm. they're going to re-release all those titles again. But they're supposedly better because you got you waited and you held out for the new system, so they could have better graphics. They'll run faster, and uh, you know the machine's actually nice and not full of dust, and it's quiet and it's new and it's nice. So, you know, it really it's a terrible time to buy a new console game, in my personal uh, humble opinion. PC can't go wrong. No, that's true, and I like the PC because you know there's a lot of games available for it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Grand Theft Auto's coming out, and I, you know what? These websites should be ashamed. I feel like there's no reason. Like, as someone who I work at a radio station, this is kind of related, kind of not. The, our radio station is very, very obsessed with content on the websites, and one thing they make sure doesn't happen is repeated content on the same website. They make sure that if oh, if a DJ is blogging about something going on in the community, another DJ isn't going, "Hey, I like that too," and they're blogging about it because there's no point. Like the story's been told. So. Right. There's these bloggers and these... The, I'm talking about IGN and GameSpot. These are the websites we visit for our information. They don't have enough there for us to, you know, put together a full newsworthy show. So we have well, to, I've got a Kotaku, you know, so it's really bad over there today. Yeah, and that's all bloggers. But even GameSpot, I was so disappointed. They were just, just littered with... Uh, with Grand Theft Auto V, the first couple of scroll wheels I'm scrolling down... Grand Theft Auto V, there was not a break in the stories. So, I, how much could they really say about it? I'm worried now. Oh, that's way it's too much It's the best hype. game of the year, and it's not even out yet. Yeah. Best game of the year. It's going to be incredible. I know that. It's got everything you can imagine in a game. I mean, this is Grand Theft Auto in full force here. This has, like, got everything. Yeah. I think they, they could have actually renamed it something else. I mean, that, it's almost a completely different game in, in that sense because of the, all the different things they've out offered. But, um, yeah, it's a good game. You can't wait for it to come out. Uh -oh, you don't know it's a good game because you haven't played it yet. See, that's what irks me. It's game of the year and nobody really has played it. Yeah, that's true. I don't know why they've, you know, considered it that when it hasn't like, even come out yet. Why are we calling that yet? At least get Give it a week after release date, official release. Exactly. It's just, they're hyping it. Well, yeah. If everybody feels like it's game of the year, then everybody will run out and buy it, because we need it. <laughs> We're missing out if we don't get on the ground level, even though the ga buying the game of the year is really the best thing you could do, but no one, no one should wait that long. But that's when you get all the good stuff, all the expansions. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm trying not to get my hopes up anytime soon because I don't want it for console. I don't play those consoles anymore. I'm waiting for PC. Yeah, PC, me too. Of PC, course, yeah. I don't even have a console. So, and, and I'll be, you know, I'll be the first in line for the PC version whenever that's supposed to come out. I don't. Do we ever confirm? No, if... you're not going to be in line because you're going to buy it on Steam. Well, don't I know. Lie. It's a it's a metaphor. I'm not. There's no freaking line for PC games anymore, unless you're a World of Warcraft fanatic who waits in line at Walmart and the line wraps around the store. <laughs> Why not GameStop? <laughs> Actually, when I went to get Borderlands 2 over at uh, the GameStop, GameSpot, 
I don't GameStop. know what it's called anyway. GameStop. I went there and I had to pick a number. And there was a line <laughs> See, out there, of people waiting for it. Yeah, pick no. A number. The last World of Warcraft I expansion. I picked one. <laughs> <laughs> what? I want to go home. So the last World of Warcraft expansion. Uh, Walmart, Best Buy, GameStop, wherever they had it selling, the lines were wrapping around the stores. It would probably be faster to download it, uh, a digital download. <laughs> that doesn't even happen here. Like, any even midlight release, Call of Duty or anything, maybe five people in line. Halo is the only one I've ever waited in line for, and that's when I was a little bit younger. And uh, Yeah, that, it was always my, my local game store. I never went to Walmart, because Walmart, there, for even games like Halo, there was never a line. So I was surprised to see World of Warcraft do that. But Walmart, it's just like a guy has a bin full of games. He's like trying to get them in the case, and and like ten people come up, like, "Hey, can I get that?" Uh, oh, yeah, here, here, here. And then it's not, nothing spectacular. The game stores try to make it like an event. They have like a screen ready to go, and they turn it on. Oh, the yeah. They're allowed to, and you know. So, and I was friends with the people who owned the game store here, back you know back then. So I went to those. Those were fun. But other than that, now I just sit at home, and Steam lets you most of the time pre-download the game, so you get it instantly at midnight. You can There's start always playing. like a little update, though, that irks the crap out of me. Yeah. Yeah. That like 10, 30-minute update like on release time, and it's like, <laughs> why? What broke? Why? I pre-installed it <laughs> 10 hours ago. Who messed yeah. up this game in 10 seconds to where I have to download this stupid patch? Exactly. No, I found a bug. You you can fly by double jumping. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> How did you guys not fi fix that? Yeah. That's really going to alter the gameplay for some people. <laughs> oh, yeah. That will. I don't know. Games have changed too much. <laughs> you it's... crouch and do a barrel roll, uh, your health is full. <laughs> oh, yeah. These are very serious bugs. We need a patch now. Yeah, that's annoying. I don't know. I'm just kind of happy that I'm not excited about it. I really could care less. But yeah. I, I think that it is going to do well in comparison to Grand Theft Auto 4. And uh, I think I was talking to uh, Jemmy about this earlier. Uh, I think Saints Row, Saints Row 1 and 2, really put a thorn in the side of Grand Theft Auto when those came yeah, out. Yeah, it's their competition. It's it, definitely it, the competition. It was, but now Saints Row has turned into this sci-fi game. It almost isn't about stealing well, cars. It's and... a parody of itself now. Yeah, it's... and they oh, love wow. it. They 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 make fun of themselves. So that's the kind of game they've become. And uh, Grand Theft Auto is still you know traditional stealing the car, rob the banks, you're the criminals. So I think it'll do pretty well now that there's no no comparison again. It's kind of alone in its own genre. It's a sandbox RPG style game, but not a lot of games let you be. A criminal stealing cars and do whatever you want. Do you remember when it first came out? It was on a console oh. and it was, it was, it was pixelated and it was all it like was like above view. Above view. I played those on like the PS One. Grand Theft Auto yeah. One and Two was. No, yeah. the first one I played was three. So I got like the, all the three D stuff and I'm like, oh, this game's amazing. Yeah. And then I went and rented Grand Theft Auto One and it was the overview and I was like, oh no, That's I'm not what playing I this. Yep. And then I took it right back to the rental store. Yeah. That's what I did. I it's played like Grand Theft Auto. Stick I played Vice City before knowing that there was anything before Vice City. I didn't know that Grand Theft Auto was a thing, and then I got Vice City found out there was a Grand Theft Auto 3 and got that. And I'm like, oh, this, is, oh, this is pretty good, you know, for back in the day. Yeah. I'm thinking, how good were Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2? And I, I got those for like $5 for both of them, I think, for PS1. And I turned <laughs> oh. them on. I'm like, this is horrible. <laughs> this is like Game Boy yeah, quality. Uh, just, it was crazy. But now it's, you know, I think it's going to be a good game. I think people are going to like it, mostly because it's been overhyped, but now there's no comparison. A lot of games that are overhyped, you can compare them to something. So Call of Duty, overhyped, but Battlefield came out at the same time. So people are like, Battlefield's better. No, Call of Duty's better. And at least there was a balance. Now that's just Grand Theft Auto. So yeah, but have there's to a lot like of it. other shooters, too, that kind of do the same thing with matchmaking and, you know. Yeah. Halo is essentially the same thing, but in space. Yeah. So It's, it's less realistic than Call of Duty. Yeah. So... But I mean, you can make that comparison more. There's not a whole lot of sandbox games where you're a criminal just running around like, oh, I'm just going to jump off a ramp and try to destroy this car. <laughs> now let me call my girlfriend because I want to do a sim date. 
I've God, got a little I hope they take that out. work. I hope they take that out of the game. I do. But we'll see what happens. We'll know we'll know very soon. I think a lot of it's Grand been leaked Auto already. Dating edition. Yeah, That's... I I'm pretty sure a lot of Grand Theft Auto has already been leaked. Well, when you go to the website, it shows all these little tiles that you can click on and it's got tons of different kinds of options that you can you know, as far as the options in the game that you can you can do. So, I mean, it's it's far much more than I mean, they've doubled That's up on huge. features. They've doubled up on features from the last Grand Theft Auto. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. See if it turns out to just be some big social uh, second life type thing. Second life <laughs> in Grand Theft Auto? No. Yeah. It's going to have a, a base. You know what I didn't watch? And I'm, I'm pissed that I didn't watch it. Maybe I'm kind of glad now because I don't want to get roped into the hype. But uh, I'm kind of angry that I didn't go and watch the multiplayer video of it. I heard it was fantastic. I heard people went, like, their minds were blown and their eyes melted from their wow. faces. If anyone, yeah, do you guys know about the multiplayer in GTA 5 at all? Um, well, I, I, know I know a lot of people are excited about it, and I know uh, my sister and my best friend are going to hook up and do the multiplayer together. Okay. So, yeah. so cause there's co-op. Really about it. It's supposed to be fantastic. Well, that's a good aspect, because what pissed me off about co-op games, and this was just a nitpicky thing, I got over it like in 10 seconds, but when you co-op with someone in Halo, you're both Master Chief. And that's not right. Because yeah, Master true. Chief is Master Chief. And then later they added the alien. So what would happen is there was like Master Chief and then a Spartan and then the Arbiter and then an alien, you know. So I think they tried. They were trying to like, you know, alleviate that stress of I'm, you know, I'm Master Chief, but then this is Master Chief. And then you're in the cutscene, and you're only one of you is being referred to. Maybe the other one's like standing in the background or something stupid. Like Master Chief, thank God you're here. You're the only one who can help us. And the other guy's like, hey. Hey, <laughs> but I I like that aspect of uh, co-op now because there's three different unique characters, so you can pick which role you want to be. One guy's going to be sniping on the rooftop while another one's busting in to uh you know the building. So mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, I think even chat's agreeing. Like a lot of people are like, you know, co-op games are kind of dumb in that way. You'd think with how picky everyone is with stories nowadays, that wouldn't be a thing. But right. I thought you guys froze on me for a second. I no. just saw two frozen faces. <laughs> I was just everybody's just master thought. chief. Everybody's master chief. They're gonna boot into Grand Theft Auto Five and everyone's gonna be Master Chief in pink armor. I wonder if that'll be moddable. <laughs> Grand, Grand Theft Auto's been moddable for a while, hasn't it? Um uh, PC, yeah. I don't know about on console. Well well, if it was moddable on console, you'd have to break something to do it. <laughs> yeah, well that's but, true. I'd be interested to see, like, there's a lot of weird mods even now for Grand Theft Auto 4 that I thought were kind of, you know, I install them and then they don't work. Yeah, it's a little hard to get them in there. I, th I don't think the game was meant to be modded and they were able to uh, no, find a way more, to do it. But people have done yeah. it. The yeah. Graphics updates and stuff like that. Right. Oh, Vice City, I installed a graphics update for, and that was kind of cool. It, it made all the cars really shiny and Changed the lighting a bit. That Smoothed was out of, some of the pixelation. Yeah, subtle stuff like that it usually tends to work. But when it's a whole game mechanic, there was an Iron Man mod, I think, for uh, Grand Theft Auto that people like really wanted. And the, the only way you can get it was, I guess, back in the day. And now if you try to download it, it just you get a virus or something stupid. So, But there's still <laughs> videos of people Don't flying around as Iron Man. And they're like, oh, I want that. But <laughs> there's no way to get it. Skyrim, however, has all these different mods, and they everyone oh, seems to have a blast modding it because the the game devs are, I guess, supportive of a mod. I didn't even really know that until recently that Skyrim and Elder Scrolls games get modded like crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they have, have like a... a mod checklist API. How did you? Oh, you never played it on PC, so no. And I still can't get it to work on my PC. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's a sensitive subject. No, like not Oblivion anymore. and stuff's all the same way, and like you. Everybody always just plays through the game as fast as you can, and then, like, the fun part starts. You mod the game, like, with bonus adventures and just, like, crazy off-the-wall stuff. So there's that even, like, complete, like, islands that people have made, you know, for, mm -hmm. for the game. It's really cool. But 
There is one mod that is actually kind of a joke, I think, but uh, it's like I think it's like a magnet mod where everything you, you push a button and everything is attracted to you. Like all the people are attracted to you, so you've got this big ball of people following you around. <laughs> Like yeah, and then you let them let them go, and they kind of explode out. That's oh, that'd really be fun. Silly. Katamari, I played that maybe <laughs> once. That was a weird game. Oh, but it's so much fun. It's just so goofy, but, but I love it. Lucklin, thank you for joining us in chat. I'm going to shout out to Lucklin real quick, because we're going to talk about something related to him. Yeah, we are. I'm actually going to... Awesome. We should probably jump into that now. I'm going to let Lido take the lead on this one, because you've been, you've been drooling... You, your computer's broken because you've been drooling on the keyboard. I have been. I, I, I was just amazed when I saw uh, Lucklin uh, put out a video, and I said, whoa, what's up? And uh, I went ahead and checked out on his stream. Uh, of course, I was working, so I didn't get to see it live. However, there was a recording of it, seven hours long. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't watch the whole freaking thing, but, man, that was long. But I'm telling you, this is an incredible game that he's uh, he's uh, co-developing. Uh, it's called the Aegis Effect, and um, this is going to this is uh, it's going to revolutionize. I think it, gaming it's, it's, again. It's crazy. It's the whole the whole idea of the game is is if you read the story on the website, which something that it was funny because on the in the stream, Lucklin kept telling everybody, just read the website, read the website. <laughs> Nobody was reading it. People but, don't know how to um, read on the internet. That's what no, live streams are for. How I learned idea, to read. How I the whole read. Idea the, yeah. <laughs> the whole idea of the Aegis effect, okay? Aegis means like shield. It's like a, a, a word for, I guess, the word shield. And uh, since Lucklin's in the chat, he can kind of help me along here. But uh, <laughs> um, the whole thing... Uh, is this this giant alien craft has hovered over a city, and the city is procedurally generated, so it's always random no matter, you know, what server you go on or what game you play, it's always going to be a different map, a different city. And this, this, this alien spacecraft came up and uh, dropped this blue dust onto the, the city, and about 80 to 90 percent of the human life's life on there has been changed and they've been infected. So they're kind of like kind of zombie-ish aliens type thing. And uh, your your whole goal, and then there's a dome that's been put over this, a five like a five mile radius dome over this city. And your whole goal is to survive. And um, there's going to be a day and night cycle, so the night time is obviously the time that you, you, you need to take cover, and then during the day is when you try to you know, take care of yourself. But this this game includes building, crafting. Um, yeah, I've got the uh, wiki up here. Uh, they've got uh, it's a random city survival gameplay, multiplayer, engineering, mechanics, hacking, crafting, terraforming, consumables, equipment, weapons, vehicles, building materials, nourishment, medical, exploration, scavenging, safe house. Survival tactics. There's, I mean, this game is gonna have everything, um, and you know, a lot of the. Well, I'm not sure. Who, I guess all of them were pretty much uh, inspired by Minecraft. I, I think just, a, there's a lot of Minecraft inspiration here. Well, yes, but but I, I think and I think Lucklin will will uh, will probably say this because I I think that they're inspired by. All the games that didn't do it right. <laughs> yeah. So what they did is they taken taken everything that they felt like was would have been right in some of these games, including Minecraft, and just kind of like put it all in this game. And this game is going to have everything. It's even going to have you know how you got redstone in Minecraft. Well, it's yeah. going to have something similar to that. It's going you're going to be making logical devices. We're going to be able to make you know uh, current and you know whatever you're going to do. So this this is going to be Crazy, and um, it's obviously uh, it will the 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 year I think is to 2060, so that would be the year. So you can kind of tell where the technology. I like that. There's a time be. frame. Yeah, it's that's the year that it's all kind of happened. Now the whole idea, the whole story behind it doesn't actually happen. 2080. Okay, I was close. <laughs> the whole idea of the story already happened. You're just thrown into this world. So. 
everything that, that I've just discussed about the alien uh, spacecraft, the whole thing has already happened, and you're just there to survive. And um, right now they're taking suggestions, whatever you can. You get on their wiki, you get on their website, you sign up for the forums, and put in any suggestions you might have, comments, whatever. They just want feedback, any kind of feedback. It would be helpful for these guys, and they, they just really want to put this game out, and they want it to be perfect. They want it to be just, as Drew says, it's the tits. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have that? So I have that. I'm looking tits. forward to it. I signed up. I've got. I'm signed up on everything. I think because <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to miss nothing. Well, yeah. So I got the newsletter. Again. I got everything. Yeah. I I even signed up. You know, on uh, the uh, Pixel Loops. Uh, website too, so <laughs> just so I, I don't miss anything. This is why I think AAA developers like EA have something to worry about because look at games like Star Citizen, mostly community driven, completely community funded, and it's it's taking off. Like all this stuff is taking off, and they they have no giant you know backing from a company like EA, and. Yeah, it's all about community now. People want to be... Minecraft is a great example of being able to build your own game. And people... Even people with, like, very limited skills um, in terms of coding can build a game within a game. So Minecraft maps, that's what that is. When you play a Minecraft map, you're playing someone's idea of their own video game. And the only way they could communicate that is through making a map in Minecraft. And so more sandbox games, you know, there are. There's going to be more opportunity to make different styles of, of your own thing. So having... Having a game like this and adding a redstone kind of element to it and Minecraft kind of elements to where you get to create whatever you want within it, that's, that's what people want now. That's the sky's the want. limit, according to what Lucklin said. The sky's the limit, man. You can do anything. Whatever you can dream up, you can build it. Yeah. That's their motto, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I watched, I was at the, I think at the tail end of the live stream, I finally, I, I got there and that, I heard that said a couple times and that made me really excited alone and I've checked it out. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really happy for for Luckland, for Pixel Loop, and just for gaming in general, man. I, and here's the thing, I, and I look at things like this and I think, okay, uh, some games can do this. They can start out with alpha, kind of sell the game, put it out there for people to try, and all that stuff. They're not going to do that. What they're going to do is they're going to wait until they have a completed product. You know, maybe beta, whatever it might be, they're going to put this thing out there where it's completely 100% playable and all the major things are going to be included in it. So, so they've already been working on it. Like Lucklin says, they've been working on it for over a year. And uh, he's saying, we have no idea what they're up to. So uh, I could just, um, I, you know, from what he said on the web, uh, on, the, on the stream and the, and the, the little hints. Um, he's not giving it too much away, but from what I understand, it's just blow away. I mean, over and over again, he just kept saying, just read the website, and trust me, this well, is going to be he, incredible. He's in the chat right now. He says, uh, we have no idea. what we're um, Expect new things every Monday and Friday. I'm going to try to call him on Skype right now. We've never tried this before, but I have my board wired. A lot of people don't understand this, but you guys don't hear yourselves, even though you should, because you're coming through my board, which acts as a microphone. And we've tried mm -hmm. it on Skype, and then you do hear yourself. So Google Hangout just knows. Uh, so you're going to hear him. I'm going to hear him. Hopefully he doesn't g go crazy trying to talk to us. But let's try this right now. Yeah. <laughs> that pro that's probably super loud. Oh, dear. And I apologize for the volume. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hey. Can you guys hear me? What is you yes. can hear you. That, that's uh, no, I can't. I can't hear. My, I can't hear myself. You can't. So it's good. Nope. Oh, fantastic! I can't awesome. hear myself at all. Awesome. So, so I know you guys are, are are itching for for answers and stuff. I can't say a lot, but I can tell you guys this. Uh, it, no, I, it's really interesting to read comments like laugh out loud. So there's been lots of games like that. Well, yeah, there has been lots of games like that. And once again, when we said on our stream, we said that you know it's very very rare that somebody that somebody comes up with a brand new idea. More than likely, anybody out there, that no one ever really comes up with brand new ideas anymore. They build off of old ideas and make them better. So 
one of the things that we did and we got tired of completely was playing games like DayZ, playing games like War Z, playing games, you know, different games out there that were so limited on what you could really do. I mean, a lot of people really fell in love with DayZ, and don't get me wrong, I thought it was great. It was a mod from Arma mm -hmm. 2, and it was awesome. But the thing was is there were so many things that you could tell and hopefully the standalone is going to be awesome. But at the same time, there are things that we wanted to do. And as you guys know, I've been involved in the Minecraft community for three years now. Oh, yeah. So I've learned a oh, lot yeah. from this community. A lot from this community and from Minecraft in general. Actually, more from mods now than I have from Minecraft. Because there's a lot of really cool things that are out there that a lot of people don't realize and don't you know use every day when it comes to Minecraft mods. So all we've really been doing is kind of just sitting back in a hole together, kind of huddled, trying to figure out how to make a really cool game. One of the biggest challenges that we're going to face that we're working on pretty vigilantly right now is uh, creating a completely randomized, one hundred, almost 100% 100 traversable city. That's never been done before. I mean, that's yeah. literally never been done before. That's That means that you can go, like, like and, and a lot of people are like, well, five miles isn't that big. Well, That's let me give so you something in perspective. Is. Okay, if you're in New York City, and you're in a city like the size of New York, and five miles to do do it, stand in the middle of New York City and look basically five miles each way on, on a cross, mm -hmm. and you go, okay, now, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to go north, and I'm going to start going through every building, every part of a subway system, every little store that there's there, all these different things, and how long do you think that's going to take you to accomplish? Oh, Not to mention geez. skyscrapers, tall, tall buildings with uh, every floor. Do you have every floor in the skyscrapers too? Or yeah. Can you not say we oh. do? Well, See, I'm not. I can't say too much, but yeah. we've we've there's there's systems that are that's being worked on right now that are going to revolutionize how artificial intelligence work. I'm telling you, the guys that, that we that we are a part of, that all of us guys, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time, and we all do a lot of these different things for a living for huge companies. So, like, there's a lot of things that are being done right now. Like, we have a guy who, uh, I don't know if you guys were in my stream, but Zeke Clay in my stream, he's uh, he graduated from, from Texas A&M with, uh, with a master's in electrical engineering. He's actually creating the whole entire electrical engineering uh, system oh, from scratch whoa. and the hacking system from complete scratch and it's going to be and see here's the thing like I, I'll, I'll tell you guys I'm going to give you guys there's seven people in here so you guys consider yourselves extremely lucky with what I'm about to say so the yeah. the, the the electrical engineering system is going to be two sided it's going to be for beginners and it's going to be for advanced people now I'm not going to say a lot of things but I'll give you an idea of what it does so how many of you guys are familiar with something called visual scripting visual I'm scripting not. is is like for instance there's a there's a game game engine the unreal engine uses a visual scripting module uh visual scripting called kismet and what kismet does is it has these modules that you can drag and drop onto a screen and you can basically hook them up inputs outputs uh you can create uh different effects from these certain modules so you can have a like for instance how we look at redstone now First of all, I'm going to throw this out there for everybody that's going to call us copycats because we copy <laughs> Redstone. We didn't copy Redstone. Redstone is based on logic. Logic is in engineering. So obviously that was not copied. It was really cool the way that they implemented Redstone and logic into Minecraft because it was like a hidden gem that nobody knew about. Well, ours is a little different than that. It's going to be working with circuitry and circuit boards, and it's going to be at a micro level, and it's not going to be at a level where you're creating a footprint that's as big as your house in order to make a door open. That's, yeah. that's the big thing for us is what we're going to be doing. So it will be created on a micro level. And so the, the different things is there's going to be a beginning level, which is modules. So you'll have set modules. You'll have like a pulser. You'll have like a, uh, you'll have a sensor. You'll have a, and maybe a, 
an AND gate, just these different things, and you'll be able to lay them in there, and you'll be able to hook them up. Just like you would hook up, like in Minecraft, you would create, you would actually create the AND gate, and then you would wire the AND gate, and you would wire the X, the the, the NOR, and you would wire these different things together, and you'd actually see them. Well, these are just modules, so they have a, just a, they have an output and an input depending on what they are, and you just wire them up. And it's really simple to oh. do because uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that are going to help you along the way. Well, there's an advanced level after that. The advanced level lets the advanced users create their own modules and their own schematics. And you can take those schematics and, I don't want to say, but you can sell them or barter or trade or do different things with those. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm saying. So there's a really, really cool system, and that system is going to be insane. So that's being worked on right now. So that's an optional thing like Redstone and Minecraft. There's more to do in the game, obviously. That's just a thing, just like Redstone is in Minecraft, this is in your game. Okay, so I, I'm going to throw one more thing out there just to let you know. <laughs> Our systems are so open-ended that we have the electrical engineering system, we have, a structural engin- we have a structural system, architectural system that lets you basically create your own buildings and stuff like that. I mean, have you heard that on the stream? We are so confident. But why we're doing this, okay, and this is what I learned from Minecraft. What I learned from Minecraft was when you first open Minecraft, when you're a new Minecrafter, when you first open Minecraft and you look at it, the first thing you think of is, oh, these graphics suck, and this feels like I'm in a kid's game. Yep. But then, yep. Yep. Then, you start, then you start feeling it, and you start going, okay, this is kind of interesting. What I love about Minecraft is it gives the player, it's basically, it's the, all, it's the all-encompassing sandbox. And may, what I mean by that is if someone wants to come in and play and just survive and make a house and do this and do that, they can do it. If someone wants to go into creative mode and just build whatever they want to build, they can do it. If someone wants to just go in and play with redstone, they can do it. Well, we're doing basically the same thing. We're creating, we're giving you the tools to build your house with. So, and I can confidently say this, when everything is said and done, you will be able to program and create your own robots. We know that for a fact. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. That's the that's one thing really Minecraft dumb. is missing. That's, that's yeah. missing yeah, from there's, Minecraft. There's, there's no mobility. There's some really, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, every day we look at it, and I'm just like, I can't believe that we're doing this. We've been doing it for a year, and here's the nuts thing, is that we've kept it so under wraps that we haven't wanted to say anything about it. That must have been we hard for you, Lovelin. Nothing. It was so hard to do. <laughs> Oh, I bet you're always yeah. live. You're always doing stuff online. That I, I, that would be exploding. I'd be wanting to tell everyone. So yeah, uh, I, I've, I've snuck little things. I've done a lot of subliminal messages in my live streams where I would pop a screenshot up every now and then and be like, "What's that?" And they're like, "What's that?" <laughs> like, I don't know. It could be a game we're working on. Um, the one thing I was going to answer about you said, "How about gravity?" Well, let me, let me, let me ask you guys this. So, who, all of you guys? I know, Lito, you've read the story. Vortec, have you read the story? I've not. Jimmy, have you read the story? No, I haven't. All right, cool. So Lito's read the story. Um, if you notice, Lito, when you read the story, you notice that we really we really do a good job saying that it's not Earth. I don't know if you noticed that or not. <gasps> oh. So the gravity's different. You get to do whatever you want then. That... Well, no, 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 no. But you know, but did you did you understand that that there was nothing mentioned that we were on Earth? No, it wasn't mentioned. But See, and that's what a lot of people that. automatically think that it's on Earth. But so could it the be ship on Earth, took could the city be? up. So you have no idea what it is. And see, that's what I find interesting about how people, when they read something and they don't really read it and you don't look at because we did all this stuff on purpose. I'm giving all six of these people that are in your room right now some pretty – some pretty yeah. crazy knowledge because it's not it, – it's, it's we did that on purpose because that gives us the ability as, as artists and designers to really not be binded by anything. Even though we're in, the, we're in the year 2080, we could be on planet you know XR and you would never know. So the, the thing is is that it's very um, – the game, there's a lot of surprises and, I, and I'm not going to say a lot, but there's a lot of things that you guys are looking forward – there's a lot of things that would be cool that we're looking forward to showing everybody. Like I said, every Friday we will have either like a new piece of concept, new model, new, uh, new different things that are going on. Like I think this Friday we're going to reveal the survivor itself, the survivor's basically what you're going to look like mm-hmm. and it's going to be very customizable very customizable so uh yeah that's what we're doing wow oh, that's exciting wow well that's amazing Can't wait. 
yeah, I, there's no ETA on this game. Obviously, there's no. Is there any kind of alpha? No. Plan? Right, right now, though, here's here's the thing, and and this is basically what our plan was. Our plan was we we've been working on it for so long, and we wanted to we wanted to start gaining a a community. We wanted to start a community, mm-hmm. and we wanted to to have a community with such a huge like you know, hey, we really want to see this game go. We really love what you guys are doing. You know. This is what we think, and and I'm all about community completely because, and that's one thing that I'm so mad about lately about Minecraft. I don't know if you guys stumble in any of my streams and listen to me rant about Mojang and Minecraft because I think they're making the biggest mistake they can ever make. And even though they've got tons and tons of money, I think the biggest thing that they're doing wrong is they're not relying on their community. Like I think the last two snapshots I've seen, excuse my language, are complete shit, and that's just me. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because I still, to this day, cannot take an egg and cook the damn thing in a furnace and make a oh, freaking egg to eat. No. I know, or that's I really basic, too. Kill a sheep. I cannot kill a sheep to get meat. Now, let me tell you something. I had a kid on my stream, 17. He did that for me in 10 minutes. I have a mod. And 10 once minutes. Again, once again, wow. once again, there's, there's dynamite. Yeah, exactly. Dynamite. What blows my mind is they think it's more important to have a gigantic portal from the the, the overworld to the What's nether that? so a gas can come through. Yeah. That's the <clears throat> stupidest. I, I can't understand the logic behind that. So it's like for me, for and, and I look at the, sea the biomes, ever. the biomes that they do, they, they're like, oh, well, we got new biomes. Well, I don't know if anybody's like knocked on Moyang's door and said, hey, have you ever seen biomes of plenty? It kicks the shit out of your biomes. Why don't you go talk to that guy and say, hey, we would really be interested in bringing you over here and checking things out. And that to me is why they should be on their community because their community is doing things way better than they are. That's yeah. all. Yeah. That's and so true. that's why I'm very, that's why I'm very firm about that's why we want to build a community. That's why we want our community completely involved. We're going to listen to everything our community has to say, because at the end, when everything's said and done, we want our community to be like, Hey, you know, we were a part of this every we, you know, yeah. this, this is what we wanted. So yeah, that's why. Yeah, you I know, have the Aegis effect, Con. <laughs> I, exactly. I hope so. I, I noticed a while back in an interview, Jeb said that he wanted to eventually give the game to the community completely. Like he was going to do one last big, like shebang, one bit last big update, and say, "Okay, here's your game. I'm going to give you modding support, modding API. You guys are going to create it from here on out." And honestly, that's wherever I'm waiting for because. Like yeah, like you're saying, I'm not excited about the new biomes. I don't. We haven't. We have okay biomes. Whatever. If I want more biomes, I'll play Feed the Beast. I'll download the biomes of plenty. That that's a great point. I didn't even think of it like that because you're right. They're not listening to the community, and they have these at, giant at curse forms. And curse took them over. And I don't even think they check those out anymore. They don't care. Nope. I don't think they do. I really don't because like I just like once again I can't get behind the law. Lo- I can't find the logic of why make nether portals bigger when all you need to do is take 10 minutes, make a, make a, a freaking egg graphic and make it so I can eat an egg. I mean, I, and I really, <laughs> that blows my mind. It literally, there's so many cooler things that you could do with Minecraft and either one of two things, they're just letting the community go ahead and do it. And they're just doing stuff for the hell of it to look like they're busy. I, I, I really don't know. It, it, it's really, it's really sucks because I've been with it for three years now and I've been passionately with it and I really love it. And I love support them but at the same time after you start i've been playing feed the beast a lot after you play these mods you don't want to play minecraft no more you want to play these mods because they're so much more interesting yeah. because in minecraft there's nothing to do after you do it what do you do you just build another house in a mountain like, you can't kill the dragon again unless you start a new world exactly i mean so, i mean i don't know no that's a, that's a great <laughs> point so and you're who better than you to do that, like I, if I think of someone who's going to make a community-based game, I think of you. You you created a Minecraft community outside of their forums. Uh, am I mistaken about this, or were you the first uh, second-party forum or third-party forum? I should. We say. were we were about the first or second. We were the we were we're on directly on their website. Yeah, on uh, Minecraft.net. Your, yours I mean, was right it, under it, Curses forums, I think. Yeah. No, we're we're on actually Minecraft.net. We're on their community pages. Yeah. But I mean, that that now that in itself is like okay, my my community that I have on Twitch right now is is absolutely amazing, and 
completely supportive of everything that I'm doing. And, and, and that's where I'm learning all this from. Like I really stopped doing a lot of YouTube stuff because YouTube, like a lot of people are just doing YouTube for views. They're not doing YouTube to have fun. They're not doing any of this stuff anymore to have fun because it's all about making money now. I mean, granted, I do this for a living, but at the same time, I really love my community. I love entertaining them. I love being there for them and just talking to them and just, it's awesome. And it's like, I don't understand why a lot of people aren't like that. I, I think no, it's, you know, that is you. Uh, I have to say that uh, personally knowing that we have been able to even talk to you uh, shows that you care about your community. So Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, we're very grateful that you're here right now. I mean, I'm grateful to call you a friend. You're, you're probably the best person, in my opinion, to, to lead a game like that to success. And I'm, you know, I'm saying yeah. that just even if I didn't ever talk to you, I would still say that because I can just see how much you love your community. And I've taken that to heart. I love my community. I, I'm not, you know, I get maybe 25 to 50 views a video now, and I love doing it. I'm starting to have fun. I'm starting to make, like, funnier comedy sketch videos. I don't care if anyone watches them. It's a hobby of mine. I do it because it's my fun. education has taught me a lot, and it's good practice. That's why I do YouTube. And I know that's a little bit off topic from what we were saying, but no. it's also about community. And yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. I'm excited to see where this game goes. And you're, I feel like Minecraft. You're right. I feel like they've kind of, they they feel like they have enough of from their community to read their minds now. It feels like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing I wonder is if just their community is so big now they can't really they really just kind of look past it and just do their own thing because it just like I said I can't find the logic behind where these snapshots are coming from. I mean, the biomes is a great thing that's awesome, but it would make more sense to pull from your community and grab the guy who's doing biomes of plenty or at least knock on his door and talk to him and say, hey, we're really interested in what you did there, and we'd like to take what you've done and implement it into Minecraft. I mean, honestly, if I was a mod maker and they came to me and said that, I would feel so honored about that to have my mod implemented into Minecraft. It would be a great move on their behalf as a community move. But yet, they did it. With, they, I think they did it with Doctor Zark with one horse. Why didn't you put the whole mo creatures in? Oh, because it's way better awesome. than what you guys are doing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, they need more sea creatures. Squids. How many years has it just been squids? And they're so derpy too. I hate squids. Well, that's what I mean. Like it makes no sense. There's no logic behind that. They drop None. egg. No. You can't eat like, calamari. Like, do they sit around a table and go, "Oh, I know what needs to be next. Let's make fishing no. better." Who gives a shit about uh, fishing? Can... Oh my I've god, it them... blows my mind. I've been, I've been seeing Absolutely. them travel the world a lot lately. That's all they've been doing. They've been, really. Yeah, spending money left and right, going on trips and <laughs> renting Lamborghinis and tweeting and Instagramming about it. And then, yeah, they they add three new fish that don't swim in the water, but they're there. If you you can fish them out of the water, but you can't physically see them swimming around like you can in Tropicraft. Yeah. See, and there yeah. we go again. There we go again. I just like, where's the logic? Where's the logic? Why can't you do what these mod makers are doing? I mean, you know, it, it, it's like you said you were going to come out with some API that was going to make modding easier and blah Back blah blah. 1. I honestly 3? feel that they're going to they're going to take a they're going to do some type of percentage fee or something for mods. I guarantee you they will. That's just, I mean, if they're going to charge for realms where you have to go play on a server on mobile and you've got to pay for it. They're going to charge for that. I guarantee you that. They're so, and, and it sucks because I know them. I know those people. And it's like, yeah. it's really interesting what happens when, 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 when money gets there. And don't get me wrong, Notch is a great guy. He, he supports a lot of things. He really does support a lot of things. I just don't think it's him. I think that there's business decisions being made and there's different types of marketing decisions being made that, that, Really, I think they're the wrong decisions. Well, he might have partners and stuff that he does. He can't just trump everything they say. Now he needs to be making money. Minecraft can only sell so many copies before everyone has it, right? I mean, it's yeah. it's still selling millions of copies. What they reached twelve million just now, and they're probably getting close to thirteen. So, yeah. by they're not running out of money by any means, but eventually they cool. have to do something, either a new game or they have to market Minecraft in a different way. That's why it's coming to PlayStation now because they they finally got rid of that contract with just Microsoft and like we got to sell more Minecraft. So that can't happen forever. They got to do something, nope. and I'll be behind them if they make the right choices. I mean, I don't yeah. see myself not playing Minecraft in the future. I don't, but I mean, you know, ten years down the road, I can see it still being a thing. 
but yeah, I really wonder how they're going to keep their company afloat. Now they got a lot of employees and everything. Yeah, but 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 Vortec, they've they've made so much money. It's it's not even it's insane. Like it's insane. They're the largest selling indie game in the world ever to date. So it's like they're the largest selling Xbox Live freaking game on Xbox Live. Yeah. They're the largest selling on every free mobile platform. So like they're yeah. not going to run out of anything anytime soon. Well, if they keep trying to grow and add employees, I mean, they're going to want more money, whether they're running out or not, right? If they but keep it's, trying it's, to go, go big. Minecraft sells itself for some reason. Yes. It's like a virus. <laughs> and, and it's like someone's <laughs> playing it, somebody watches them play it, even though they hate the graphics, they keep playing their way. It, I call it the World of Warcraft effect. Because I remember when World of Warcraft came out, and I remember the exact thing that happened with WoW. WoW was, when, when WoW came out, it was... People who were diehard Blizzard fans before Activision, diehard Blizzard fans, loved Diablo, loved Diablo 2, and they were the ones that were always there watching their stuff, playing Warcraft, and blah, blah. It was, it was fan. It, you, you really think someone's 85-year-old grandma and four-year-old kid followed Blizzard back in the day when <laughs> they were there? No, no they nope. did not. Like, literally, it was the point where somebody sat over, you know, and sit there playing wow, playing wow, playing wow, and his girlfriend's wondering why he's not going to bed, and then she's peeking her head over her shoulder, and she's like, oh, what's that? It looks like a cartoon. Oh, it's wow. Oh, well, this is why we're not doing anything in bed. That's great. Well, how about if I play with you? Because, and that's how it happened. Tell, and, and, yeah. and I'm telling you, I believe that's how you. it happened. I be, it's funny the way you say it. One thing after you. the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, and all of a sudden, now grandma... Grandma's over there baking a cake in the kitchen. And she's like, oh, kids, what are you doing? And she walk over there. And she's like, this looks really cool. And then she starts playing. And next thing you know, they're fucking raiding. And it's like, oh, my God. But that's, that's why I call it. That's why I call Grandma it the World raids. of Warcraft effect. It's the same thing, I think, with Minecraft. Even though Minecraft is very, very intriguing for kids. Um, a lot of kids are very you know, Minecraft, a lot of parents that have their kids play that they're, they start playing. And then all of a sudden everybody starts playing. We got a server together. We're building Disney world on the freaking server. It's awesome. Yeah. It's the same effect. Yeah. People are still going to buy it. They're going to keep buying it. It's going to keep going. And it's just going to, it's going to be one of those games that really, I think never dies out because it's a sandbox game. That's why we would be stupid not to model what we we're doing after Minecraft. Honestly, we would be stupid yep. to do that. Yeah, no, yeah, I exactly. I think you're you're doing enough to where it's an original idea. Still, you, everyone gets inspiration from something. Notch got inspiration yeah. for Minecraft, and whoever made that got inspiration from something else. So, yeah, no, you're doing it right, and you're adding in all the elements that people have been like, "Well, where could Minecraft go?" Well, for one, it's not a world made of blocks. You know exactly. Yeah. That maybe, was our biggest thing. Maybe too. I'm sick of looking at flipping cubes all the damn time. Cube yeah. world, <laughs> uh, more cubes, yay! Voxels. I mean, it's still it's still voxel based. The terrain, the terraforming, is all voxel terraforming. Yeah. So like you can literally create tunnels, uh, create stuff. But you can do that, and it's all. Uh, and you can also build and different things like that. But yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it I, really, it's. I'm excited. Well, we're looking forward to it, definitely. Yeah, I am. I'm. I'm. I'm looking forward to see where it goes, and you know, this this whole community thing, I think, is awesome because, you know, we we finally can let it out and let people know about it and actually get legitimate feedback if we're doing the right thing or not. I mean, that right there is is the biggest step for us is to get legitimate feedback, like you, Lito, like what you said. Like that is the that is the biggest thing for us is is getting that feedback. Because it lets us know yes. if we're doing the right thing or not. Yeah, and I mean, there's executive decisions to be made, of course, but the, your audience is always going to be right, regardless. So, of course. And yeah. I, I, all I hear lately is a lot of people complain about Minecraft. Not, not, not the majority, but I, the people in my circle do complain about the way Minecraft is going, from what I've heard. And yeah, I, I agree. Larger nether portals, I didn't even fathom that. That, that thought never crossed my mind. Wait, exactly. Where the where did it come from? Like, how do you sit there around a meeting table and go, "What do you guys think we need?" Let's let's write down a top ten list. Okay, you ready? <laughs> go. And everybody writes it down. And they're like, "Oh," and they start they, they start comparing notes. They're like, "Shit, you wanted bigger portals? I did too." We all <laughs> yes. Let's make bigger portals. Screw with the community. Let's make bigger portals. 
Like, what? <laughs> how? Why? I just don't oh, understand man. it. We need guests to come and gear shit up in Minecraft. Exactly. That's what we need. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Hey, zombies and skeletons <laughs> are bad enough. You know what? Let's make the portals people. bigger. We'll let the gas come through and just destroy everything you have. They're the biggest pain of the ass when they're in the overworld as it is. You just saw, <laughs> and you're like, where the hell is this thing at? It's ridiculous. Oh, man. And they made the game so difficult already. I love what they did with the zombies and the skeletons, making them tough. I complain about it all the time, but it's tougher, and that's good. They did it. People were like, yeah. no, Minecraft is too easy, and they did it. Now they're like, hey, it's still too easy. No, no, okay, you did it. I, I'm having enough trouble. I, we can't play on our server anymore without uh, it being daytime. Like, when it's night, even if your area is lit up, zombies just pour in. And this is a yeah. giant server with tons of people all the time, and it doesn't matter. Zombies everywhere. So they did a good job. We don't need guests to come in here now. Like, that's just going to lag my server. What are you doing? Uh, so so then somebody's got to make a plug-in to block that on block, servers. Just don't make giant portals. I mean, that's a good thing. You can determine how big your flipping portal is still, right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Just crazy. Crazy stuff. So, I mean, do you guys have any questions? Like, I know, Lito, do you have anything you like to ask? I'll say Lido's uh, read the most about it. I've, I, I've watched your live stream, and I'll be honest, I haven't gone on the website and actually read everything yet because that's how fine. good of a podcast not host hurt. I am. I'm not hurt yet, Dan. <laughs> Thanks. See, a lot of the I'm questions are answered on that live stream too, and also if you look at the wiki. So there really isn't much I can ask. Um, other, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my envisioning of the game is, is, you know, I, I'm, I'm. I'm sure that it's going to oh, be... Oh, drivable know. vehicles. I saw a lot of pictures yeah. of vehicles. Yep. Drivable vehicles. See, I didn't want to yeah. ask questions because I missed part of the completely, live stream. Completely customizable vehicles with the structure system. Oh, uh, well, you can, you'll be able to actually take scrap metals and different things that you find from the world and actually like create an armored vehicle like in Mad Max. And it, it actually affects the, the overall uh, durability and toughness of the vehicle will they need Each... fuel oh yes you'll need fuel yes can i Go attach on. weapons <laughs> yes you can yeah oh, definitely. Yeah. and, 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 and let me let me even take it, it a step further you can make your own weapons um we made it specifically because if were you there Lito, when uh when my my friend Taj got on and talked about the in-depth part of the structural engineering system no, I was I watched it for about okay. two and right. a half hours. Most ga most games most games when they attach things to something on a game, they use something called mount points, and these mount points give you there's a certain amount of mount points where you can mount like you know a piece of armor here or something there or a gun there you know maybe a, a tail here a scoop here blah blah blah. Ours is done a completely different way. Ours is done at a molecular level, and so basically if 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 they can be binded together, you, you, you have two items that can come together and you have something that binds them together, whether it's welding it to the vehicle, whether it's tying it there with string or rope or whether it's putting there with duct tape. I mean, this is no lie. These different things, and it also oh, wow. affects, like, for instance, you make a weapon. Okay, let's say you're, 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 you're out in the world and you're, you're looking through different piles and runes and stuff and you come out with some rebar you come up with a saw blade and maybe a shoelace right so at this point what you can do with those three things is you can bind them together you can take the saw blade put it to the rebar tie it in with the shoelace and you kind of got this like semi sort of swing blade i don't know what you want to call it but the shoelace has a durability and the durability is complete shit <laughs> so if you decide to do that it's obviously going to break on you but let's say that you find the rebar the saw blade and you might you might have a welder and you have a decent welding skill and that's another thing it's not level based it's completely skill based so you have a welding skill and you can weld to it and actually reinforce it if you're good enough with it you can actually increase the durability of the weapon and the damage of the weapon by I'm telling you way too much, but you can do these different <laughs> things and uh, your oh. outcomes can be different. That's all. Okay, so oh, have you awesome. played Worm Online? I'm sure you've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, how much have you played of it? Not much. Not much? Just, did, no. did you get bored of it? No, I, I really just not much at all. I like maybe in there and out. 
Yeah, which but, is but, very slow growing, very slow leveling. Yeah, that was my biggest complaint about it. I couldn't get into it because it took too long. How is the scale of like how the time in that sense? Like, is it is it going to be really long to get your welding skill up, or is it something you can just kind of grind for a little while and get it up there? You're you're an MMO guy, so grinding for you and me is it's different because I play. I don't play MMOs very much, so, so I complain a lot when I have to grind. I I, I can't say that. You can't say because okay. it's, can't say. actually it's something that we really think is going to be way different than everything else okay. out there. Oh well, then that's I guess that's my biggest complaint about think. MMOs in general is just having to grind a skill, and it's well, not very well, fun. Well, yeah, but I mean, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Um, in life, mm -hmm. you know. Nobody comes out of the womb learning how to type on a keyboard, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. What tools do you use to kind of advance that? I had a class. They basically gave you stuff to type, and then they put a piece of paper over your hand so you couldn't see the keyboard, and it kind of grew from there. But, I mean, it took me maybe about a week. Books, reading, stuff like that, okay. correct? Yeah, I, I see what All you're right. saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, there's different way. There will be different ways. Um, there will be different ways to do things. Uh, I, I like I said, I don't want to say too much because it's pretty damn cool. There's a lot of cool things. So you have that in mind, though. Oh yeah. Oh okay. pff, yeah. I can. We're all MMO players. We're all we're all hardcore MMO players. So like we we've looked at you know leveling systems. One of the biggest inspirations for this is not really Minecraft. One of the biggest inspirations for a lot of this is Star Wars Galaxies. And I'm going to tell you why Galaxies is one of the biggest inspirations. Because Galaxies, back in the day, and there is no more MMOs like this anymore. And I can tell you, and any, I guarantee you, you can't name one because they're not like this anymore. Galaxies basically was a complete sandbox world based on the Star Wars just Star Wars. It used the Star Wars name. I mean, you had a few, you know, characters in there that were like, you'd see them every now and then, but it wasn't, it was just like a sci-fi world. Mm -hmm. And they gave you these tools to let you do what you wanted to do. So for instance, they had a class and the class was uh, architect. So you'd have to be a, you'd have to start out as a merchant and grind your way up into uh, different trees, get your way into an architect, master architect. You can make houses, you can make guild halls and all these different things. Well, these were items that were given to characters, people, and they could take these and place them down. Well, if you placed a certain building down in an area in a world, in one of the, the planets somewhere, you would, you would basically put it down and it would be called a city hall. Once that was down on the ground, all of a sudden, that area would be named a city. Like you would name it a city, mm -hmm. and then all, now from that point, houses would go down. You would actually players would come in. You would recruit players to come into your city, put houses down, and it would keep growing. The more players that you had in there, the more stuff that was coming in, it would become a metro. It would become a city. Then it, well, it would become an outpost city metropolis, and then you would, could specialize in that. So I mean, literally, it was all player ran. The player was a mayor. There was no NPCs that were a mare. The player, they had to be there. It was all player ran. And that's where we drew a lot of it from is because they basically gave us a sandbox and they gave us the tools to do these things. And they did nothing. There was nothing. There were some NPCs that would give you quest. But other than that, it was up to the players to make what they wanted of those worlds. And wow. that's, that's where we drew a lot of inspiration. See, I never played that game. I didn't know that. It was one. Of, I I feel honestly, it was one of the best MMOs to date when it came to a community-driven MMO, because there was it was all player ran. Everything was player ran. Only the main cities you could go into the main cities into the canteen. Even the cantinas, you would go into a cantina and there's NPCs there, but you would have player entertainers there dancing because they gave buffs to warrior players. They would come into the cantina, they would talk to the people dancing oh. and shit, and they'd get buffs. <laughs> they'd pay them, and they'd go out and go into hunting parties and start grinding. But that's how it was. But it was all player ran, and that to me is something that. I feel is very missing in this day and age with games. It's not community driven anymore. And that's why we're so adamant on driving this with the community. Yeah. No, that's fin I love hearing that too. Cause the one thing about Minecraft going back to that, when you have a server, people build a city, it's amazing. And then they abandon it because there's nothing to do in Minecraft, but build, but thank you. That's yeah, no, it's, it's true. That's I've always thought truth. that. And Where's my adventure. Yeah. There's no adventure. Now I don't, really necessarily see them adding a questing system 
I think it would kind of be lame. But when you're in a server, you would think the server owner would take take that initiative. And we've even talked about that with our server. But it's a lot of work. We're not master it's, coders. It's a, ton, it's a ton of work. It's not. It's a. It's a lot of. It's a ton of work. It's like you're building a mini MMO. Yeah. That's and, what yeah. you're trying to. That's what you're doing. And people have done it's, that. It's, it's crazy. How many of you guys watch Walking Dead? Oh, I, I'm going to start. I swear I, to God. I've watched. Oh my God, Vortec, are you serious? I just got into Breaking Bad. I'm finally like caught up with it. So that's how behind I am on shows. Like it took me until you know, recently to watch Breaking Bad. You watch it? Yeah. What the? <laughs> Is that blue meth candy? It's, well, it's rock <laughs> candy, but yeah. Oh, that's good. Breaking Bad game. <laughs> that's funny. Black blue meth. Walking Dead is next on my list. Well, I haven't watched Lito, it. Have you watched it? I haven't. Okay. No, well, I watched Breaking of, Bad. Inside, too. I'm not going to spoil it, but inside the Walking Dead, there's a there's a there's a, a, a basically a safe haven called Woodbury. Okay. In Woodbury, it's a safe haven. Like there's children that live there. There's and, and it's like if if you don't see the gates, you re, you think you're you're not in a a zombie apocalypse. So it's like there's you know trees, flowers growing, people are growing crops, and they're hey neighbor walking next to each other. But as soon as you look over the wall of all the giant like metal and stuff, you can see the dead land out there. It's completely dead land, and that's how we envision this game working. Is you'll find an area with friends. There's so many things that we plan on putting in this. It's gonna blow your mind. We are gonna revolutionize voice comms in a game. By the way, Ooh. so there are oh, so many things that we've got looking at right now mind. that you well, it's 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 crazy. I, I you I know can't, Lachlan, I wanted oh. to so oh, I wanted to say something about the the voice in in game voice. Um, Second Life has been using uh, a system by Vivox, which seems to work really well for Second Life. So if you were trying to find a system to use. You might want no, to look no. up Vivox. We're, 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 we're creating our own. I, oh, I'm you're gonna, creating I'm your gonna, own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type it better. to Dan. I'm going to type it to Dan, and I want you guys to just watch his reaction on his face. All right. That's all. All right. Okay. If it's, I'm, I'm dumb, remember. If it's really technical, I'm not going to understand. Little pencil's going. See a little Skype pencil. Uh-oh. Pencil of anticipation. Oh, that eraser hit. What happened? A typo. <laughs> Spelling counts. <Okay. laughs> so I'm not matter. allowed to say this. I can just react no, to it. Okay. You can react to it. Now you're okay with this getting recorded and uploaded to our uh, RSS feed, right? Oh yeah, I don't you, care. You said a lot. There's, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's okay. It's fine. Okay. It, I, I mean, these are things that are going to come out in the in the coming weeks. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, um, just to keep from dead air here. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're recording <laughs> a podcast. The Aegis Effect is at um, A-E-G-I-S-F-X. Uh, it will be linked in the show notes. Dot com. It will be linked in the sh show notes. And uh, on there you can have access to the official forums, the official wiki, and their newsletter, which I suggest anybody who wants to be a part of that sign up for that newsletter because he'll be sending out updates and stuff and information regarding the game and its progress with newsletters. So You know, earlier we talked about Grand Theft Auto V and said there's no news at all. And it's stuff like this people should be watching out for. Grand Theft Auto, whatever. It's not on PC. I don't care. They don't, they don't care about their community. They just want to put out a game. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great, too. I'll, I'll play it <laughs> once it comes on PC. But yeah. this is the kind of thing I, I love talking about, especially now. Like, Star Citizen's another one that I always keep an eye on. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's going to be good, too. Yeah. And we talked about that, I think, a couple weeks ago. But the Aegis effect? Hmm. This is going to be... And there's also, uh, on the website, it shows... Uh, you got the game story. Definitely read that. And then you've got uh, a lot of pictures of... Uh, Artwork and stuff regarding the game. I'm not sure, um, Luckland. If do you have actual game, in-game yeah. pictures? Yeah, there's, on there's the game pictures on there. Okay. Yep. Because I know you showed them on the. On Matter of fact, it's the demo level. There's, we're we're working on a demo level. Oh. Because oh. okay. um, 
because yeah, but I mean, don't don't the, don't, the stream, don't, but I, don't freak out over that. We're working on a demo level <laughs> to make a video and demonstrate the systems to you guys. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, you'll see. And this is a really well done website. I will say that too. Your your uh, thank you Aegis Effect website very easy to navigate. If anyone has questions, very easy to direct them there. The forums take two seconds to sign up for. And also, I'm going to say thank you for letting me put my own avatar on your forums. That is the biggest pain in the ass <laughs> when I join a forum. It is so oh, hard yeah. to find the customization. Oh, yeah. You usually have to pick up a, a, about, there's about five or six of them that you can pick from. That, or yeah, you can I upload your own. own, but it has to be all these certain specifications, and you have to go through all these pages to find it. Very well yeah. done forums, too. What do, you, what do you use for the forums? Is it your own thing, or did you use a, a cert, uh, third party? I have, no, I have no idea. Ted no idea. did it. My oh, okay. partner, one of my business partners did it. He's still typing. This yeah, is gonna, it's, it's long. This is going to be my That's boring. in depth. Yeah. The coolest part is no one else gets to experience it. I know. I'm a little jelly. Everyone gets to be teased. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right, here no, we go. On the website, anyway. there's there are some um, in-game footage. So to speak, or they're just snapshots, but they're wild in intrigue, raised eyebrows, oh, excited laugh. <laughs> okay, that's genius. <laughs> that oh my god, that's perfect. Ah, uh, <laughs> curse you, Lucklin! I can't tell anyone. Damn, no, that's <laughs> that's brilliant. That's like, man, this is this isn't gonna be any game that just kind of explained the game too that's all i'm gonna say like yeah it, the, it, 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 that's what yeah that tidbit it, of knowledge it, right there tells me what what i'm in for like in a gaming experience <laughs> i'm gonna say well done and you know what thank you for taking the time i know you're busy tonight and just like totally spur the moment to uh to summon you but i really appreciate you taking the time Oh, not a, no problem at all, man. And I know it's probably frustrating you sitting in that chat like, they're getting it all wrong. I got to get in. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, you know, because you, you, uh, you, because all of a sudden when you come out with a game similar to this, there's so many other games like it, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that we stayed away from was zombies. So when you say that they're like zombies, they're not like zombies. Not even the closest, like zombies. I'm glad because I'm sick of zombies. They're, they're basically, when you read the story, like? when you do read the story, Lito, you know how we talked about the blue dust. So, yes. so, so the the gist of the story for those of you that haven't read it is there's a city, and um, the story is told through the eyes of a girl that lives in the city. And one day, there's a lot of big storms heading in, and over the city appears this gigantic ship, gigantic ship, just huge and it just sits there over the city just sits there does nothing just this ominous humming sound just does nothing and the council of the city starts getting agitated and they start <laughs> flying stuff up there to try to communicate with this thing using all types of ways to communicate with it well now they really start getting mad because the thing won't communicate back so now they start attacking it trying to trying to get into it of and course. drill into it and try to figure out what it is. Well, the ship goes into an invasive measures move and, and basically goes into a complete defense mode and destroys everything almost. Meaning by there's a centerpiece of the ship. You read this in the story, Lito, right? There's a centerpiece in the ship that, that it, might not, it might not be in there. I'm not sure if it is or not. Did he say anything about that one? Because I know the whole story. So I'm not I know. I'm just the centerpiece I, that shoots I, down in the ground and crosses yeah. the void. I don't think I'm not sure if, if that was brought up in the stream. All right, cool. Well, I'll tell story. you anyways. So, <laughs> so there's this there's centerpiece on the ship that that actually detaches from the ship and shoots down into the ground and literally it's like a mile long and just shoots down into the ground, straight down to the ground, destroys everything below it and starts 
harnessing the energy from the planet and pushing it up into the ship. So there's this beam that shoots up into the ship and causes the ship's outer rings to create this dome that comes around onto the ground and actually goes under the ground. So it's actually a circular, it's, it's almost like a circle, a full a circle with the top cut off. It's like a sphere. Okay. So, th- I mean, and that obviously that's given us the, the, the boundaries that we need to make what we got to do happen. And it's a, it's a gigantic battlefield. And what happens once that dome goes over is they disperse this blue dust into the air. And if you read the story, there's a little snippet in there that kind of explains what the blue dust is and what it did to someone. Um, so the blue dust is in the air. And there's probably 10 million people in the city, 8 million, something like that. Think about almost 85 to 90% of that population being affected by this dust. This dust is, if you go on the website, matter of fact, I am a mod in here, right? I'm going to link something to you so I can give you an idea of what happens to people. There's different effects that happen to people when this dust enters their body. So So everyone reacts to it differently, creating different... uh, Uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I can't get a direct link to it. Can I? Let's see. No, I can't. I'll just link the media part, and okay. then everybody can go on the media part into the screenshots. And there's two aliens there. We have more. We actually have a lot more, but these are the two that we just put up for now. And you can get an idea of, look at the one. It looks like a huge, he's a big, big one. He's got this huge uh, blue stone coming out of his back. And uh, And later on, you'll find out what that stuff is. I can't tell you what it is right now because that'll spoil it ton of stuff but um there you go so let me explain another thing too because i I remember i heard you Lido saying something about aegis effect and what it meant aegis effect does mean shield but it also means something in greek it also means being controlled by a higher knowledge that's what it means okay so so that's that's all i'm going to say on that because what you think when you guys look at the screenshots and you look at the, the stuff that's there, you think, well, this is just a zombie. Oh, no, it's not, my friends. It's, it's very, very, very different because they're not, they're, they're not just bumbling around and there's, there's, they're, they're very lack, you know, they, they can attack you in hordes and find pieces of your body and then eat it. That's great. <laughs> no, these things right here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. You can just go to that link, you guys, and check them out. But that's what happens to a human. That's one of the stages that happens to a human. As you look at one of them, you can actually see the remnants of the human that used to be there. Yes. They're wearing their head for a hat and their arms like little pixie wings. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Not going to be good. So I mean, that, that's just – that's it. Now, when you're in the world – now, we haven't really figured out how we want to do this yet because we, we don't know if we're going to do it not – Yet, so we when you're in the world itself, the event that happened with the ship. This is you're you're in the world, and it's years later. You're in a battle zone. You were grow you grew up in this, and you you are you're like a freedom fighter. You, you're literally fight. it's it's a constant war. You're never going to beat the ship. The ship will always be there. There's no way to destroy it. It's just in the air. It's like it's like being in a war zone for years. Like, for instance, Iraq, okay, or Afghanistan. It's like being there for the last three years, and nothing ever really changes. It's the same shit. You're, you know, you're going out on patrols. You know, you're looking out for things happening, and someone gets killed here and there. It's the same thing, and it's never going to end. It's just an open it's just a, literally a sandbox world with open-ended systems that are going to let you do some of the most insane things you can think of. Wow. And what's yeah. cool is that the community gets to help build it, and then they get to share all the, yeah. the awesome things they create. Just yeah, like, and it will be moddable, too. It, it'll be moddable, too? Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. You win. Yeah. You win the video games. That's That's it. Everyone should just give it, you all their money. Model. Like I said, there's, it's, it, we have a long, we have a long road ahead of us. Still, we we have a lot done, but like we, in order to get it to this next level, we really need to start getting a community together that can see what we're doing and really just support that and know that this is going to be something cool. Like we're really doing something cool. So for us, it's a good thing because it's only been like six, seven of us, and it's. 
and we just kind of sit there and bounce it off of each other. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. That's awesome. But then when you show it to the public finally and we get the reaction that we're getting, we're like, okay, we're on the right track. No, I don't see. <laughs> You're not yeah, on the wrong track are... by any means. <clears throat> You guys have floated Man. around suggestions and ideas to yourselves. Now you're leaving it to the community to come up with some stuff too, as well. Yeah. So that's yes, we and that's, that's where it starts. Where I mean, we're at if now. you want to see ingrained screenshots on the screenshots that I sent you, these are just these are pre-alpha things that we've got right now. But if you go on the media, you can actually see next to the two models, there is a it looks like a a, a futuristic gas station. That's actually um, that this this is just. This is going to be where the demo takes place. Now, these are all temporary textures, temporary lighting, so we have new lighting systems that are going in and stuff like that. But we wanted to show something. We wanted to show that we actually have something in-game. This is in-game in the engine. We have a fully functional day and night uh, cycle. And one of the things that we're really proud about is that the weather system is going to have accumulation. We're waiting to see if, if we're going to be able to do water accumulation because that's going to affect physics. So you'll be able to actually fill containers with water, and it will affect weight physics. Um, so these are things that we, we're, we're still looking at. Right now, there, there is snow accumulation, so snow will accumulate on the ground and cause snow piles and different things like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Wow. Wow. So, damn. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, th I had something in my head I was going to say. Oh, yes, uh, in chat, you were asked if there will be a Kickstarter. We don't know yet. We will, once we get to a certain point, and if we feel like we're going to, we're going to. But we don't know yet. We don't want to say anything just yet because we don't know. We, because there's so much that we still have to get done. We don't want to, if we do one, let me put it to you this way. We don't want to put up a screenshot and a story and then you guys go support it because that's bull. Yeah. That's like, that's bull. We're already, we've yeah. been doing this for a year now. We've got a lot done. We want to do a demo and we want to show our systems off where people say, this is legit. Wow, this is insane. That's what we want, the reaction. And if we do one, we want it to not fail. That's what we're doing. That and you want to give them something more tangible than just a screenshot. Exactly. So. I want to give them way more tangible where we can have a car in a garage sitting in front of you and literally the character is taking stuff that he scavenged from outside, putting it next to the car, welding it on the car, and increasing the durability of the armor on the car. I mean, just different things that, that we want to accomplish. It's like you, oh, wow. you haunted the, the <clears throat> dreams of people like thinking about what the perfect game would be. And Yeah. yeah. Like I said, first it's going to be, uh, be a challenge, but we were prepared for that challenge. We've been, like I said, working on it a while. And we have a lot of these things done. Like a lot of these things are are going to be implemented, and it's it's crazy. Someone asked if the car would attract the monsters. Like oh uh, yes, I mean yes. you're gonna. There's gonna be the the AI in this game is going to be pretty insane. Um, daytime is not going to be too bad, but there will be a certain something in the daytime that's gonna literally you're gonna when you see it you're gonna fear, because that's all you. you Never mind. <laughs> the, you know, I, I get it because there's a point. I'm scared in, already. Going back to Minecraft, there's a point in Minecraft where you don't fear anything. You just kind of become immune to everything because you just gather enough stuff and you're like, whatever. Mon monsters, yeah, zombies. Yeah, we, we, we really are going with the horror theme, but we want to make it. So this is, this is why. This is why I think it's going to be very cool because what's going to happen is the game is going to start out hectic. You know, you're going to have to find us. You're going to either go in with friends. You're going to have to find some type of shelter, build out that shelter, and start really, like, like in Minecraft. You know, when you get there the first day, you build a shelter, and it's nighttime. There's no bed if you didn't kill any sheep or anything like that. You're, you just stay up all night, and you maybe dig a tunnel down or something like that. Same with the, what we're doing is I want it to be... I want it to be hectic in the beginning, but I want it to get to a point where you can create your own sanctuary and feel safe in that sanctuary. But as soon as you leave that sanctuary, that hecticness is still there and it's not going away. That's good. Because I remember watching videos of yours a while back and you brought up some really good points and I was sitting there like clapping at my screen like, yes, because they made Minecraft really easy. Like coal is coal used to be the hardest resource to find and you needed it right away. And it was difficult to find. And then they just, coal was everywhere all of a sudden. And just like nighttime, they added beds. Who cares about nighttime? i got to get three people on my server to go to bed. 
done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. So I mean, like like I said, there's there's a lot of things that that we're working on, and and so you know, in the coming weeks, you guys are going to see some pretty crazy things. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm but sure. I do got to go because I got to jump into a meeting because they're asking me to come into a meeting. So well, no, we appreciate it. We're actually out of time as well, but thank you for coming by. Thank you for taking the yeah, time. Definitely, thanks. Thank oh, you. no problem, you guys. No problem I'm, at I'm all. Stoked. All right, man. All right. Well, have a great night. All right, cool. You guys have a great night. night. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, Diamond. Bye. Bye, Don. (laughs) See ya. Bye, guys. So that was Lucklin. We thank him once again for joining us on the podcast. We definitely ran long, but uh, last week we only did 30 minutes, so I feel like we're okay. We're in the... There you go. We we paid it back. special guest. I I believe that, you know, uh, I think we've done this in the past, too, with a special guest, so... We definitely want to give that time because that time is precious for somebody to talk to us about their game they're developing. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and that's that's awesome. And uh, we will update you as we hear things. But, of course, if you want all the latest updates, the website will be linked in the show notes. It's aegisfx.com, A-E-G-I-S-F-X.com. And, uh, again, visit everythingnoob.com for the show notes everything you need to know. We have contact us. You can leave us voicemails. You can write us anything, any way you want to contact us. If you have further questions, maybe maybe we can do another Q&A with Luckland sometime. Can't promise that, but uh, yeah, anything you want to ask is better directed to his forums, honestly, but ask us, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we'll see you guys right. next week, same time, same noob time, same noob place. <laughs> <laughs> Noobs out. Noobs out. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Everything Noob podcast. Be sure to visit everythingnoob.com for previous episodes, show notes, host bios, and blogs. And while you're there, feel free to write us with any questions, comments, or suggestions you may have. Don't forget to check out the links to our Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch TV channel as well. On behalf of the noobs, see you next week, and happy gaming.